Good evening, everyone. Welcome for attend welcome to the I Give faculty webinar. My name is Abigail McEwen. I serve as Carolan's faculty director. Just want to remind everyone that we are recording this session. Um, we will place the recording on the Carolan website in the next week or so. Um, I'm really pleased to introduce our I Give faculty member, um, Professor Prof Patricia Bori, um, to explain and introduce the I Give community. All right. Um, Abby, you're going to do the slides. Are they they're They're up. OK, great. Um, well, welcome, everyone. And it is a uh, real honor to be here. My name is uh, Professor Patricia Bori. Um, I have been with um, University of Maryland and the Carillon communities. Um, for about seven years, and um, I am have led the I Give community um, this entire time. So I'm going to share a little bit um, more about myself, a little bit more about um, the community, and also a little bit about um, the courses in particular. Um, <clears throat> Um, before I went, uh, before I went, oh, there it is. I couldn't see the slides, Abby. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, before I uh, was a professor here at University of Maryland, I spent um, about a decade in um, public service um, in the federal um, um, administration, but more particularly the Obama administration do doing um um, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and disability employment policy work. Uh, and prior to that, spent about a decade in the nonprofit space, working primarily on education reform policy. Um, and now I am here at Maryland um, teaching um, and just absolutely love being part of the Carillon community and love working with the I Give students during their first year at Maryland. Um, <clears throat> so just a little bit about the, um, the I Give community in particular. Um, I think, Abby, you can maybe go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so um, the, I Give, the I Give course, um, or excuse me, the I Give experience, um, you spend a, um, your first semester St uh, studying leadership change. Um, you, <clears throat> you answer the question um, that the community is, is I give, and the question um, that we explore is how can you or we give? Uh, we talk about philanthropy as a um, major lever for social change, what philanthropy is. Um, we discuss your role and how you can be a philanthropist um, around any effort um, that you are passionate about. Um, during the, the Carillon experience and the I Give course, um, there are a few pieces that frame how we look at what we study and how we study it together. The first is um, that you are the experts. Um, we study and look at social change more broadly. We study, we study about um, social change theory. We um, think about what um, the biggest social problems of our time are and how we fit into them. And so I use a methodology called popular education and the framework for that is that you as the students are the experts, the identities that you bring, the experiences you bring, the backgrounds that you bring um, really help inform how you um, would approach trying to solve issues such as climate change, education reform, um, mental health, um, um, health equity, for example. Um, and so we really draw upon um, you as the experts. The second thing that we really focus on is that teams solve problems. So we put you in teams um, and you work together to um, think about 
and leverage your identities, your experiences, your backgrounds, and what you're learning to think about how you might create new solutions to some of the world's greatest challenges. The third premise is that we all can lead. Um, I bring to the classroom an assumption that you all have the ability to lead and how you end up and wanting to and want to do that um, will be completely up to you. But the course really helps you understand. And in um, the fall, you learn specifically about uh, philanthropy as a way to create social change, but expands your thinking beyond that to figure out how you want to lead, what you're passionate about, and how you want to go about doing that. Um, I won't talk too much about the Carillon community experience because I think the students are better fit for that. Um, but that is just a little bit about, uh, about the course, uh, about what we'll be looking at, the frame of how we um, work together as a community. Um, and um, I am happy to answer questions at the end and give you any more detail um, about our, um, our courses, uh, the I Give experience, and Carillon as a whole. Hi, y'all. So um, my name is Dennis Quinnen. I go by he, him pronouns, and I was business undecided as a major, and I was in Carillon last semester in the I Give community itself. And um, I want to speak about it a little bit. I chose Carillon I Give because I wanted to learn about philanthropy and learn how to give back and be able to give back to the community and to my environment. Um, it was really fun. A memorable moment for me was towards the end of the semester when like all the efforts kind of of our fruition came together at the grant ceremony where we actually awarded a grant to the nonprofit and we chose Baltimore Abortion Fund, a reproductive justice nonprofit. That was really cool. The representative came from the Baltimore Abortion Fund. We all got to give a few moments from um, our semester and talk to them. And she gave us a few descriptions of what she did in her life and why it was meaningful. And um, biggest takeaway from the course was that philanthropy is not just money. I came into the course thinking that it might have been just money and only like super rich people can do philanthropy. And then it was kind of a big part of our course itself where we kind of discussed what philanthropy was and we came to the conclusion that it wasn't really just money. Anybody can do philanthropy, anybody can give back, whether it be by teaching or volunteering or you know, learning more about our issues in the world. And um, general experience in the class in Carolyn was that it was very student-like focused, very student-led, very student-like discussion-based and a lot of fun generally, a great way to meet friends and new people. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Ella. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a communications major here at Maryland, but I wanted to talk a little bit about um, my experience in Carillon. So I was in the iGib community last semester, and I actually chose to do the optional continuation of the course this semester. Um, which I don't know, they might discuss a little bit later, but um, you can also feel free to ask any questions about that and I can tell you what I know about it. But basically just to tell you about my experience in particular, I kind of chose I give out of um, the many options because I'd always been interested in philanthropy and a ton of what I did in high school um, kind of pertained to philanthropy. I was in a ton of clubs that had to do with um, like working directly with um, students in need at underprivileged, underprivileged schools, um, donating things to homeless shelters and just things like that. So I um, kind of had a little bit of a background in philanthropy and I just kind of wanted to dive further into that. Um, also, uh, there was like a DC trip at the beginning, which was really cool. So that's just another plus that we got to do. Um, but yeah, so my most memorable moment for my community is very specific. I, we had this assignment that was a case study. It was the highlight of my semester. I'm sure Professor Moore, I think she's laughing right now, can attest to this. It was so fun. And I don't know if I sound really nerdy right now, but we had um, this case study that we had to read. And at first, when you like think of that, it's like, oh, that sounds terrible. It was so interesting. The whole class talked about it in the class, outside of the class. Like everyone was so invested in it. Like we argued, it was about Oprah Winfrey's um, school that she made in a different country, basically deciding if it was a philanthropic 
actor if it wasn't and everyone just got really into it and it kind of just turned into this whole big thing like we canceled instruction for the class to have a debate about it like it was just awesome so that was definitely my highlight and then my big takeaway from the course I would say it definitely allowed me to just get a bunch of different skills that I probably wouldn't have gotten in just my normal general education requirements so not only did we learn kind of properly how you should be interviewed but we actually got to be the interviewers for the nonprofit organizations um Dennis mentioned how we awarded a grant to one um, organization but we interviewed a few so we all had um, practice coming up with questions for that and things like that so we kind of had to be on both sides of it and that was it just felt cool because I could apply it to my real life so that was nice um and then just my general experience in the class um, and in Carillon, it is a living learning program. So that obviously means that you are living with the same people that you're learning with. So a lot of the people that I met in class, I realized that they lived on my floor and then we kind of could bond over that. So we would get dinner after class and things like that. Um, so it was just a great way for me to kind of make friends. And then you'll just kind of see faces around campus um, that you can meet in this class. So it was just a nice way to make this huge campus feel just a little bit smaller. So I really liked it for that. All right, thanks so much, um, Dennis and Ella and Professor Bori for kind of sharing your experiences um, of I Give. So I'll invite all of our attendees to certainly kind of type in questions into kind of the Q&A box, um, and we'll, we're happy to answer them live. Um, but to get us started, um, Dennis, you talked about kind of the, the grant that I give made to the Baltimore Abortion Fund on of last semester. Could you say a little bit more, I guess, any of you about how um, th that um, fund or that um, network was um, decided? What was the process by which you went through to determine uh, the topic and you know, the area of the grant and then eventually the awardee? Yeah, so um, towards the beginning of the semester, we had like a bunch of different topics. We kind of just brainstormed a bunch and Professor Bori kind of made these like whiteboards or like these little sticky big poster boards and we went around the classroom like voting we, I think we have like three votes or something about all the different issues that like we could only I think we could put our vote multiple times for each issue and um we went and decided like which issues were more important most important to us we had like education reform um reproductive justice I think there was one about like food homelessness and shelter there's like prison reform there was a bunch and we ended up choosing it was it took us a week to choose i think a week or two and we ended up choosing reproductive justice it was like a long vote we had like all our heads down we did their different votes about it kind of like kindergarten or like preschool and um we ended up choosing it and then our grant we had like a grant process to create it professor Gordy like gave us a guideline on what we could use for it and then we kind of we decided what would be important to us, like what kind of nonprofits could apply and how they could do it. And the funding is actually from the Do Good Institute at UMD. It's a $7,500 grant that they provide us with. I don't know if anybody else wants to speak a little bit more on it, but that was kind of my portion. I will um, just say that, um, Dennis, that was a great description of the of the experience, I actually um, just put in the chat a link to um, a write up that was done by the Do Good Institute on the University of Maryland's website about the I Give um, experience in the fall, uh, and it describes and has some quotes from students and a great photo of the I Give community. So um, that link is there um, if you want to hear a little bit more about it. I see a question in the chat about kind of the typical majors and interests of Carillon students. Um, I'll just say we recruit students from all across the university, so from all different kind of majors and interests. But I also noted, Ella and Dennis, that neither of you is a policy major. Um, so what was it like for you taking kind of the, you know, the I give um, kind of course and, and enrolling in this community? Sometimes students are concerned that this course will interfere with their progress toward their major. Have you found that to be the case? How has I give, you know, fit into your own kind of majors or your own kind of general education um, kind of coursework? Um, yeah, so I kind of find that a lot of students here tend to take 
um, just in general, a lot of general education course requirements that have really nothing to do with their majors, um, just for the sake of kind of learning more about what you probably won't learn about in your major. So I kind of found a lot of value in taking a policy course because it's definitely something that I'm interested in, even though it's not my specific realm of study. Um, but also just to answer your question more specifically, um, I don't think there's any like typical major or interest of Caroline students. I've met people that are completely different from me and people that we have like the same favorite color and everything matches up perfectly. And that's like kind of the great thing about it is that the classes are so diverse of people with just so many different interests and things, which is kind of the beauty about it. And you can learn from so many different people with so many different majors and um, kind of hear about everything. But I definitely wouldn't say it's like, one type of person. I think I was like the only, I switched my major. I was an education major last semester. I think I was the only education major in the whole class, but I had a great time obviously because I chose to do it again, so. Yeah, um, I'm gonna touch upon this as well because Ella had a lot of like high school experience with philanthropy and kind of like volunteering. I didn't really have any of that. I was mainly like swimming in high school. I was swim team captain for two years. So I was just school, swim practice, school, swim practice, rinse and repeat over and over again. And um, as a business major, I don't really have like a lot to do with philanthropy, I guess. I don't have like a crazy amount to do with policy, but I, you know, I kind of said, why well, close the door? I'm kind of just gonna step foot and explore, see if I like it or not. And um, I'm still undecided, but I have maybe been considering like the policy minor and policy 214 is one of the steps for getting the policy minor and innovation, I think. So it's for the, you know, why not try it out? I'll add, um, if it's okay, really quickly, uh, it's Professor Bori again, um, that what Dennis said is a very common um, thing that happens with, I give students public policy is such a broad, topic and whether you're a business major, whether you're an engineer, whether you are in communications, whether you are pre-law, pre-med, every industry and in every um, major has policy um, related to it, right? Has public policy that impacts um, the, the field. Um, every workplace has internal policy. So there is so many ways that a, po a public policy minor or even a public policy major can really lend itself to distinguishing you from your counterparts in your major because you have this additional very applicable um, uh, minor or major, or at least at minimum, just some general understanding that some of your counterparts in communications or business, for example, um, wouldn't have access to. So definitely not a um, something that you have to do. Uh, and there is a good number of I give students who end up layering on a policy degree um, as a result of the experience, which makes me very happy. <laughs> And I know that I'll say Professor Bory stays in touch with a lot of I give alumni, right? So lots of letters of recommendation. Um, it's helpful, you know, many first year students don't have kind of a small class experience with kind of faculty in their first or second semesters. And so Carolan really gives you the chance to get to know kind of our faculty in a kind of a smaller kind of setting. Uh, Professor Bory, another student asks how many times you meet up, you know, as a, um, Kind of as a class during the week, could you say something about the structure of I Give? Sorry, um, our class is uh, meets two days a week um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I think that's the same case that it'll be in the in the fall. Um, and class is an hour and fifteen minutes um, each each class. Um, the class itself, as the student said, it's super interactive, um, very little lecturing, lots of small group discussions that, as Ella said, often follow them out of the classroom and into the dining halls. <laughs> and um, so um, you don't have a ton of outside um, interaction. There are Carillon, um, 
um, sponsored events throughout the fall that all the I Give students are invited to. Um, they, um, Abby, I don't know if it's been talked about, but um, engage in the Idea 101 course together. So there are different ways that the I Give students are interacting in and outside of class. Um, and then formally, but then also informally through the dorms and friendships and things like that. Um, but on a very practical level, um, there isn't a tremendous amount of additional time required beyond your um, basics of the course itself, the coursework, and most of the um, group work is actually done in class. That's right, Professor Bori. Um, we do offer some kind of optional events for our students. Um, our kind of end of year special event will be um, end of next month. We're going to see the Nationals um, play, I believe, the Pittsburgh Pirates, so a baseball game um, at the end of at the end of April. Um, Ella, you mentioned um, kind of earlier, kind of the trip to Washington DC as a highlight of your kind of I give experience. Could you say a little bit more about um, where you went and why that was so, so memorable? Yeah, so I remember it was like the second day we got here. So we just moved in and everyone was kind of in that phase where everyone was like, so we're here now, like, what do we do? So luckily there was a Carolyn sponsored event, which I noticed a lot of my friends, now my friends that I didn't know back then that weren't in Carillon were kind of like, that's so nice you had something to do because we just kind of got here and we were told to go on this field trip with all these new people that we just met and it ended up being really fun because now I'm actually really close with the people that I just decided to go on the Metro with that day. But anyway, so we went to the um, African-American History Museum and I believe we were told to like photograph a few things things that we thought were important for class and I remember everyone was like freaking out like oh I need to make sure mine's good for class and whatever because it was just so brand new to us but it was just a really great experience because I mean we and Professor Vori was able to actually be there so we could meet her before class which also kind of made everyone a little bit more at ease and stuff which was really nice um but yeah so we all like met up we traveled together on the metro um we got to do that all day um got lunch together and then metroed back um but it was just really cool and then it kind of that field trip prompted our first in-class discussion. So you kind of can tell how everything kind of all strings together and there's a method behind the madness and <laughs> everything, um, it does make sense. And it, I just, I thought it was really cool. It was a great way to just um, get acclimated to everything that was going on. And it definitely helped me learn a lot, <laughs> so yeah. Professor Bory, do you wanna say anything more about the trip? or kind of your kind of idea um, in planning that, that experience? Yeah, so it, it is part of the, um, the nice thing is, is it's part of the Carol on experience. So while we went to the, um, to the Af um, African-American um, History Museum, um, we knew that there were, you know, all the other Carillon communities were spread out among DC. We actually had one other community, I think at the same museum as us, um, but it was a great way for us to introduce our course, which was around social change and learning about philanthropy and giving. Um, and so we were able to, you know, explore the museum, look at, um, you know, different movements from a historical perspective, look at um, the um, the question um, that I think, if I recall correctly, that we were asking them was to photograph, like Ella said, um, people who they envisioned or thought of as possible philanthropists. So we had conversations around is, was it, was Dr. Martin Luther King a philanthropist, you know? Um, you know, former Congressman John Lewis, was he a philanthropist? Um, you know, um, abolitionists, you know, um, were they philanthropists, right? So, so really kind of asking these questions um, around expanding the understanding of what philanthropy is right from day one. Um, so that, and the, you know, 
understanding and hope was that students started to see themselves in the possibility of what philanthropic giving can look like for them. Um, maybe one final question for Professor Bloria and maybe also for Ella. I give is unique among our Carillon communities because it does offer a second semester course. Um, Professor Bloria and Ella, would you like to say something more about the second semester of I give? I can give the frame and then Ella, you can give your experience. She's in the thick of it. We just had class um, a couple hours before this. So um, the students, um, Dennis and Ella gave a really good description of the fall course. Um, in a nutshell, um, as they said, what you are doing is as an entire class, you are a team where you select a social issue, you study philanthropy, you design a um, $7,500 grant that you then distribute out into the community, you um, and then ultimately decide what organization is getting it together as an entire class of anywhere from 45 to 60 students. Um, the spring course is similar in that you are also working to address a social issue but you learn to work in smaller teams of four to five to six students, you pick a social issue on your own. So for example, we have five groups this spring um, who are developing social action projects in the areas of Ella's team is education. Um, we have reproductive justice, we have poverty, we have racial justice, um, and they are all going through um, the semester using a method called um, design thinking for social change. And um, at the end of the project, at the end of the course, they will have studied the social issue. They will have, they just did class presentations today. They will have presented to their fellow classmates um, and they will have designed a solution to address the social issue that they selected. Um, that sounds all wonderful and a little with a little bow wrapped around it. And I'll have Ella tell the the uh, <laughs> the story from her perspective being halfway through the course. Um, yeah, so I really enjoy the class last semester. So I decided to continue on with it. But so one of the main things last semester was that I really was interested in a lot of topics. So when I was kind of choosing like between what I wanted to vote on, I know Dennis mentioned the process a little bit earlier. Um, I was like super torn between like a ton of them, but basically I know that um, education reform kind of always stuck out to me. So this semester I kind of went in and I was like, I'm so doing that, I'm super excited to do that. So I ended up being in a group where we are focusing on education reform. Um, and the class is nice because it's kind of structured in a way where it's a lot of group work and then a lot of independent work. So um, like Professor Board mentioned, there's uh, we're using the design thinking process. So um, that kind of allows us to really just work with the team, um, bounce off our ideas, and we're coming up with like real implementable um, solutions on how to combat our issues in the real world and stuff, which is also just something really nice about the course because I find that in other courses, sometimes I get frustrated when I don't feel like I can really apply it to the real world. But this is definitely a course where I feel like my um actions are actually making a change which is really nice um and then obviously working with groups is re really nice because you can hear from what everyone else is thinking and kind of come up with these ideas together and then um from there you can come up with some really cool things so yeah that's kind of how i feel about it i don't know if there's any specific questions about it but yeah I i'll also add um maybe a, a little bit more of a of a um Here's some of the challenges <laughs> that may that may come because Ella's giving a very, very good description. But one of the things that um, that happens, and I think her team is a good example of what's happening right now, is that you have to really figure out and in some situations struggle with how to accomplish this task. You know, you're you're submitting papers together, you're presenting together, you're making decisions together. And it is, it's hard, it's hard work. Um, and it is our skills that if you can hone and work through in a course like this, um, it's going to help you <laughs> in your jobs in the future. Um, it's 
simulating almost exactly some of the challenges and opportunities that you'll have in real life work situations when you are put on a team to accomplish a task. Um, you know, and knowing that many of you have done that in some form already on sports teams or in, you know, theater groups or in even in work, you know, in, 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 in jobs and things like that. Um, it's not always easy and it's not always um, smooth. And I know that in the fall course and the spring course, um, I always stay connected to not all the students, but a small group of students. And every one of them <laughs> says that they talk about the iGIFS experience in their internship interviews, in their job um, interviews, because they have these practical experiences that they can share. Well, thank you so much, Professor Bori, um, Ella, and Dennis um, for talking about I Give. Um, I just have some final um, kind of slides um, with Carol on kind of deadlines just to remind you of. Um, we have three upcoming open houses um, next Friday, March 31st, and then two in April. Um, on April 21st, we are virtual. We had a question earlier about how you can meet other prospective students. Um, these admitted student open houses are really the best way for you to, to meet some other uh, Maryland and Carolan students in person um, or virtually on the 21st. Um, and again, May 1st is the deadline to confirm your enrollment at UMD and also the deadline um, to submit your housing and dining agreement. If you have questions for us, please don't hesitate to reach out um, via email, carolon at umd.edu, by phone, and certainly check out our social media. You can see what um, our students and our communities are, are up to. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. <laughs>